Welcome to the Vintage Hollywood Archive. Glenn Ford was one of the very few Canadian actors who was able to successfully break into Hollywood. He played several roles in various movies and television series during the golden age of Hollywood. He acted in Western films, film noir, and comedies, and even made a cameo appearance in Superman. How was Glenn Ford's heart ruled by Rita Hayworth? Make sure to watch the video until the end, and if you are new here, don't forget to join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Vintage Hollywood Archive channel. Glenn Ford was the star of such now classics as Gilda, Blackboard Jungle, The Big Heat, 310 to Yuma, and The Rounders. His rugged good looks, a long and successful career, and a glamorous Hollywood life were every man's dream. Yet the man who could be so frank and charismatic on screen led a very different and a very private life behind closed doors. Glenn Ford was among the many Golden Age actors to enjoy a prolific career and several iconic roles. Best remembered for his film noir roles in Gilda and The Big Heat, Ford offered many praiseworthy performances. He was an underrated actor with a career spanning over five decades. He starred in America's favorite classic films such as Blackboard Jungle, 310 to Yuma, and The Rounders. His rugged good looks and tough, straightforward acting made a Western film what it was. In 1958, he was rated number one at the box office by Quigley Publishing Company's poll of film exhibitors and was constantly ranked highly from 1955 to 1962. And yet he was the actor who seemed to always have a project going throughout his acting career and never collected an Oscar was never recognized for a Lifetime Achievement Award and was never even recognized by his native country Canada or the Toronto Hall of Fame. Throughout his acting career, Ford was a quiet, ambitious actor who made the most of his roles, even the films that are mostly long forgotten. His fellow actors and friends remember him as a colleague who would always help them orient themselves in a scene or with a character or, for those just starting in the business, within the business itself. He was a man driven to act and, perhaps, continued acting long after most celebrities would have rested on their laurels. Despite the lack of recognition and award-granting entities, he had a large body of fine work upon which to rest. Glenn Ford was born Gwilyn Samuel Newton Ford in Portneuf, Quebec City, Canada, on May 1, 1916, to a family with Welsh roots. Gwilyn's father was one of the nephews of Sir John MacDonald, the first Prime Minister of Canada. Another family ancestor of his was Martin Van Buren, the eighth President of the United States of America. His family moved to California in the year 1924 and settled in Santa Monica, and this was where Ford attended Santa Monica High School, where his interest in the theater developed and grew. He was eight at the time. After completing his graduation from Santa Monica High School, he started performing with small theater groups around the town. He decided to make acting his first career choice, and upon graduation, he worked with local theater groups before going on tour with professional West Coast stage companies. During these early years, he took up multiple jobs to keep the money coming in, small but handy jobs like working as a bar cleaner and roofer. But slowly, he became better known, and the parts and the plays he performed in became bigger and better. In 1935, at the age of 19, he appeared on Broadway in Lillian Hellman's The Children's Hour and began to create himself as a well-known performer and actor. While gaining experience on stage, he wished to appear in movies. In the year 1937, he had an unsuccessful screen test with 20th Century Fox, then known as Fox Studios, and had a part in a short Paramount musical, Night in Manhattan. His first ever contract was with Columbia Pictures in 1939, and he made his feature film debut in that year, in the movie Heaven with a Barbed Wire Fence. He changed his name to Glenn Ford, naming himself after his father's hometown in Canada, called Glenford. His early Hollywood years were as a promising and ambitious young star, appearing in several very significant B-movies, such as Men Without Souls and Babies for Sale in 1940, 
and so ends our night, Texas and Go West, young lady in 1941. However, he usually managed to receive positive attention and reviews from critics about the films, which they rarely got. His Hollywood career was going smooth and well when it was interrupted by his World War II service. He had become a pure American citizen in 1939 and when America entered the World War II in 1942, he willingly and eagerly volunteered for duty with the Marine Corps Reserves. He began his military service as a motion picture technician, and after promotion to sergeant, he was assigned to a public relations office of the Marine Headquarters Division. In 1992, he was awarded the French Legion of Honor Medal for his service in France, aiding those that were fleeing from the Germans. Glenn reluctantly left the Marines in 1944 after being sent to the hospital for having duodenal ulcers. After his discharge, he returned to Hollywood and resumed his career as a handsome leading man in famous movies. His breakthrough into the big screen came with two phenomenal movies in 1946. He was cast opposite the siren's diva, Rita Hayworth, in the movie Gilda, and although his co-star got all the acclaim and fame, Ford's solid performance did not go to waste, and after the movie A Stolen Life in the same year with Betty Davis, his popularity soared in the skies, and he came to be regarded as an A-list leading man in Hollywood films. The jump from B to A-list did him good, because for the upcoming years, Glenn Ford was to be the talk of Hollywood. For several years, the films he starred in were not very high quality, such as The Man from Colorado, and the mating of Millie in 1948, and the doctor and the girl in 1949, and there was so much improvement at the start of the 1950s, with disappointing and boring films like Young Man with Ideas and Affair in Trinidad in 1952, in which he again performed with Rita Hayworth. Nevertheless, most of his movies made money and Ford's own reputation continued to increase. Although the films were not special or as good as Gilda or A Stolen Life, People also adored him and wanted to watch his films. He soon became one of the top Hollywood actors after the excellent film noir The Big Heat in 1953 and The Backboard Jungle in 1955, in which he was the main lead with Sidney Poynter and played a very ideal teacher in a rural-like area. These roles were followed with a lighter, more comic role opposed to the very famous Marlon Brando in The Tea House of the August Moon in the year 1956. For the upcoming 15 years, he appeared in very high-quality movies, giving well-thought-out, well-crafted, and phenomenal performances. In 1955, he received appreciation and praise for his work in the Oscar-nominated movie The Blackboard Jungle, which was directed by the famous Richard Brooks. The film also did well commercially. During the same year, he played the main protagonist in another major hit film, Interrupted Melody, which was directed by Curtis Bernhardt. The film was a comical hit and also won an Oscar. His varying and amazing acting skills earned him significant roles in many other major films in the next 20 years, including The Gazebo, Pocket Full of Miracles, Love is a Ball, The Last Challenge, and Midway. He played supporting roles in the 1978 hit film, Superman, which was based on the popular DC comic superhero. During the 1970s, he played supporting roles in various TV shows like Byzantine and The Gift. His last appearance on the screen in 1991 was in the film named Raw Nerve, which was directed by David A. Pryor. He was a wonderful horseman and an honest gunman, and he performed in many well-received westerns. He failed to fade fully from the large screen and performed a well-received anaglyph role as Superman's adoptive father in Superman the movie, and another tiny role in the unsatisfactory Day of the Assassin. However, his best days were behind him. Ford was a seducer and was connected romantically with various actresses. He married four times, every wedding ending in separation. His initial woman was the dancer and role player Eleanor Powell, whom he married in 1943. They met at a war bond event throughout Ford's military service once she was rather more successful than him, having asterisked in high MGM musicals like Born to Dance and Rosalie. The couple has one kid, Peter, and single in 1959. 
He was married to singer and television role player Catherine Hayes from 1966 to 1969, so to a different TV role player, Cynthia Hayward, from 1977 to 1984. His last wedding was to Jean Boss and lasted for only one year. Despite all of these affairs, only one girl ruled his heart, Rita Hayworth. They had met by chance before either had made it big. But once Glenn Ford and Rita Hayworth were solid as two trouble-causing lovers in Gilda, they fell crazy in love and started a relationship that was a lot more endearing than the lust-filled ones they shared on screen. That spicy film noir got Rita the title of Hollywood's Love Immortal. However, John Herschel Glenn Jr., who had appeared with Rita in 1940's The Woman in Question, referred to as her one thing else, the love of his life. Despite their mutual adorations, the celebrated pair ne'er managed to form a conventional relationship work-along. However, that didn't matter. It was a relationship that lasted several, several decades. Throughout all the affairs, however, Glenn's love for Rita never died, and his unflagging adoration showed itself in peculiar ways that too. In 1960, he bought the house next to the metropolis home Rita shared along with her last husband and famous scriptwriter James Hill. The role player is believed to have tipped off the property's availableness and presumably her own. Glenn Ford won the Golden Laurel Award for his role in Don't Go Close to the Water in 1958. He won the Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, Comedy or Musical for his sensible performance within the 1961 film Pocket Full of Miracles. He was honored with the Donosita Award at the Urban Center International Festival in 1987. A tireless employee, Ford typically created many films a year. Ford continued to operate well into his 70s. In 1992, though, he was hospitalized for over two months for blood clots and alternative ailments and at one purpose was in important condition. Noel Coward once told me, you can grasp you are recent once you stop to be stunned. Well, I will still be stunned, aforementioned Ford, in an exceedingly 1981 interview. On November 5, 1983, a jewelry store owner named Isidore Roseman in Los Angeles was dead in a theft. Glenn Ford, a neighborhood man who knew Roseman slightly, wasn't guilty of the crime. Glenn was convicted for the first-degree murder of Roseman. The 34-year-old was sentenced to death. For the next 29 years, 3 months, and 5 days, Ford lived in an exceedingly 8-foot by 10-foot cell in Louisiana's African County Jail and spent most of his days in confinement. In March 2014, Ford was finally innocent and free. However, before Long once gained his freedom, Ford was condemned anew this time by a carcinoma diagnosis. The arrest, trial, and imprisonment of Glenn Ford were clearly very unjust. There were no witnesses to Roseman's murder, and not one weapon was ever found. Following his conviction, Ford languished on death house for nearly 30 years, most spent within the hellish isolation of confinement. His release, which was triggered by an acquisition of new evidence, was celebrated as a triumphant exoneration. Newly free, Ford expressed no bitterness towards the state that had unjustly jailed him and approached his life on the surface with much enthusiasm. However, a replacement drawback before long arose. In March, a decision dominated that Ford was ineligible for compensation as a result, following Roseman's death and that he had pawned things taken within the theft. While Mr. Ford doesn't have the blood of Isidore Roseman on his hands, he failed to have clean hands, the judge, Catherine Dora, said. Catherine's ruling, of course, pales in comparison to the initial sin of Ford's arrest. However, it provides a sad end to a life marred by injustice in the state and absolute tragedy. Solid, steady, incompetent, Glenn Ford embodied these qualities as an actor and person. He once declared that he was never acting, he was simply taking part in himself, and therefore the statement failed to appear distorted. In an exceedingly successful career that spanned over five decades, he worked in movies and television, however, never received an honor or honor award nomination. He was one amongst Hollywood's biggest box office stars throughout the 50s, however still enjoyed engaged on the plumbing, aircon, and electrical wiring at his luxurious mansion in Metropolis. 
he projected a quiet strength, unforced amiability, and masculine charm that anchored his co-stars. Glenn was extremely talented, and his tremendous contributions to the Hollywood film industry earned him a star on the Hollywood's Walk of Fame. Ford passed away at the age of 90 in his Beverly Hills home on the 30th of August, 2006. He was scheduled to attend a tribute for his amazing contributions, but was unable to attend due to poor health. The cause of his death is still unknown. He will be most remembered for his consistent and strong portrayals of a large variety of characters from all areas of life. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new here. We now know one of the characters in this love story, but what about the other? Why Rita Hayworth hated being a movie star? Let's find out from this video.